This lecture covers the topic of uh, solving an otherwise linear circuit or network containing one nonlinear element. This lecture is part of a, a section within a first circuits course that uh, develops uh, circuit analysis techniques. So at this point, uh, you should be familiar with basic circuit laws. You should be familiar uh, with uh, basic network analysis like nodal analysis, mesh analysis, some network reduction techniques such as uh, superposition and source transformation, nodal, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Thevenin and Norton equivalents and that sort of thing. So what we're going to focus on is really solving a very trivial circuit. It's going to be a single loop circuit that will involve a source and a resistance and a nonlinear element. And of course this applies to a broader set of uh, class of circuits because this here could be a Thevenin network uh, corresponding to you know something much more complicated but it's a linear circuit so we can reduce it to a voltage source and a resistor so uh, we'll define a current IX and we'll define a voltage uh, VX okay and let's uh, kind of investigate this uh, as follows and we'll call this element X so one let's consider the case where ele element X is actually a resistor RX okay how would we solve that well uh, a number of ways that we would know how to solve it right we could we could calculate I of X as just simply VS over the total resistance right and then uh, we could then write Vx is equal to Rx, Ix. Right? That might be one way. Uh, you could actually solve it just by inspection voltage division. If we're looking for Vx, it's just going to be Rx over Rx plus Rs, Vs. Right? We could do mesh analysis which would be kind of excessive for this but we could do go around the loop uh, add up the voltages solve it that way what I want to do here is is uh, introduce a different way which is excessive for uh, this linear circuit but will uh, set us up to be able to handle the nonlinear elements so I'm gonna draw a plot of let's say uh, the current IX versus the voltage Vx. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to redraw this as uh, just the Thevenin source for a moment. Okay, we'll call this V at, mm, call it V and I. Okay, and so I'm going to start off by saying let's plot. Um, V versus I. Okay, so we'll put this over here. That's what we're plotting. And what we find is that, of course, at zero current we get Vs, and it's a straight line with a slope of minus Rs. That should be Rs, not Rx. And a y intercept of Vs over RS which we would call our short circuit current okay now um, I'm gonna draw the VI curve of our element X alright in this case our element X is uh, a resistor and okay and it has a voltage Vx and a current Ix. And so I'm going to plot that alongside here. And it's just V is equal to R times I, right? So it is a it is a line intersecting zero. Right? Just keeps going up. It has a slope of Rx. Right? So this is Vx. Right. And if we connect these, uh, this 
element x, rx, to our Thevenin network. Then at the point that we connect it, we're saying that the two currents, I and IX must equal each other, because now it's a series circuit. And secondly, the voltages V and VX must also be equal because uh, they share the same, it's the voltage across the same branch, or the two no same two nodes. So therefore, we can claim that um, the solution to our system is actually, to our circuit, is actually the intersection of these two lines. Okay? And we can find uh, that the, um, the voltage here is going to be Vs times Rx over Rx plus Rs. Okay. <clears throat> In fact, it, I guess let's do it graphically. We would say, okay, the yellow line is going to be uh, Rx times Ix. Right, and that is going to equal uh, the equation of the white line. Right, at, at the point that we have, uh, let me call let me call this current here, um, our i i not we'll call it we'll call this v. Okay, so so at the point where um, Ix is equal to I naught. Okay. Then the equation of the yellow line, Rx times Ix, must be equal to the equation of the white line. The equation of the white line is Vs minus Rs times Ix evaluated at Ix equals to I naught. Alright, so now we can write uh, Rx I naught is equal to Vs minus Rsi naught. You can collect the resistors. And we can solve for I naught. Right? Vs over Rx plus Rs. Right? So we can now... Right, that's the current I naught. Then we can actually, uh, well, very easily, find V naught. Then V naught is going to be simply R X times I naught. Right? We can use the yellow line here, um, and so that will be R X over R X plus R S times V S. Of course, that agrees with our voltage division. Uh, expression up here. So it's an overcomplicated way to solve this uh, circuit, but it sets up the method that we're going to use uh, when we deal with the nonlinear element. Okay, let's consider now a second element. Let's consider if x is actually equal to an element, uh, and I'm just putting a little triangle in the corner, just just a symbol that, uh, nothing special about it, but it indicates a nonlinear device. So we'll have Vx and Ix, and we'll say this relationship is that Vx is equal to some uh, k times Ix squared. Okay? So the Vi relationship now is no longer linear. We have Ix, we have Vx, it's going to be a quadratic term. So we could say, uh, uh, let's say that it's uh, 4ix squared. Okay, so let's try to solve that. Uh, we could, we could try to use a uh, analytical approach here where we're going to write um, uh, KVL around the loop. So let's let's go ahead and try that here. So we'll say KVL around the loop, and I'm going to go uh, counterclockwise. Right. So we'll have minus Vs plus Ix times Rs plus Vx, but Vx is going to be K times Ix squared. And that is going to be equal to zero. So we have um, K 
ix squared plus rs times ix minus vs is equal to zero. And this is a quadratic equation. And we can solve that. Right, and this is going to be a special case of a nonlinear circuit. If it's, if it's just a, a square law, if our device shows a square law, then we'll be able to um, solve this in closed form. So for instance, we could go uh, ix squared over rs over k ix minus vs over k is equal to 0. And then I can uh, write that is is going to be equal to minus b, that's this term, minus rs over, remember the whole thing is going to be over 2a, a is 1 here, so I'm going to do rs over 2k, go ahead and put the 2 in there, plus or minus square root of b squared, that's rs over k squared, minus um, 4, and what I will do here also, since the whole thing's over 4, I'm going to stick the 4 inside the radical, which become 2, minus 4 uh, AC, and so that's actually going to be plus VS over K, and the 4 will cancel with the uh, um, dividing by 2. Yeah, so we end up with that. Now, uh, it's plus and minus. But uh, notice that uh, in order for the result ix to be positive, uh, we're going to have to use the plus term because this term alone, right here, is going to cancel uh, that negative term. And so we need, uh, well clearly we need something positive uh, t to uh, to make the overall current be positive. And you say, well, why does the overall current have to be positive? Well, if you just look at the convention of the current going clockwise, and assuming that Vs is positive, then uh, um, there is going to be a current flowing uh, clockwise. So we'll actually use the plus sign. We'll cross this out, and we'll say just plus. OK, so in this case, we can solve it. Now, uh, let's look at this again on a graph, okay? So what's common in all of these circuits, regardless of the nonlinear element, is that you always have a load line uh, for the Thevenin network. You'll have a short circuit current here, which will be the Vs over Rs, and you'll have Vs here, and there'll be a slope of minus Rs. Always will have that. The difference from the last problem is that now, instead of having a straight line, we have a kix squared. Okay, Our solution still lies right here at the intersection. Okay, And so actually this solution here is the current here. All right? That is the solution. We were able to find it in the closed form manner. But that's kind of an exception. We could repeat this problem with uh, a, an element that was uh, k times ix cubed. And now, unless you knew the cubic formula, uh, you're not going to be able to get a closed form solution. And that says nothing of uh, nonlinear elements where the current and voltage are related by an exponential or a log function or a trig function, something. Uh, wacky. So, uh, in general, we cannot find a closed form solution for a circuit, an otherwise linear circuit that has one nonlinear element. So, the rest of this lecture is going to describe several techniques for how we can solve a circuit that has a uh, an a unpleasant nonlinear element. Okay, so here are some techniques that we can use and that we'll talk about for solving solving a nonlinear circuit. Okay, this is with one nonlinear element. We're only talking about one nonlinear element. Okay, so one closed form solution if possible 
we just looked at one. So for example, um, square law device. All right, so this is the exception. Most circuits will not, or nonlinear elements will not allow this. Secondly, you could use some uh, computational computational um, numeric method. Okay, so that's nothing more than letting your calculator or your computer do the work to find the solution. That's oftentimes uh, what has to be done. This could include, okay, this includes simulation, and I'll show you that. Okay, three, graphical method, and uh, we already have the basis for that with this load line. Four, um, okay, let me put in here actually back under two. Well, this, this I'll, okay, I'll leave it separate, but we'll say number four kind of fits with number two. Um, an iterative, iterative, sorry, iterative um, manual, as in other words, by hand, iterative manual computation. And I'll show you the technique for that. So this is doing by hand, like which is with a calculator, arithmetic, doing by hand what the computer would do for you. Five, uh, we'll look at separating or breaking up the nonlinear um, VI curve for the nonlinear element into piecewise linear segments. Piecewise linear uh, model call it. Okay. And lastly, we will look at small signal linearization.